الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يخبركم الله ويخبر لكم ذنوبكم وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانته وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم الحمد لله آيات that were recited sometimes you wonder why do things happen in life and one of our, my teachers he used to say that the Imam the Qari he is the radio station of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to broadcast he puts it on the tongue of the Qari or the Imam in fact one of the mashayikh whenever anybody would come and ask him a question he would ask him to wait he would ask him to wait until the next jahri prayer and whatever the Imam Sahib would recite in the prayer, there would lie the answer of the question of that person, person who was asked the question. It was very amazing. That he would, uh, he would ask him to wait for the next loud prayer so that when Imam would recite, the, whatever he would recite, he would get the answer from that. So he used to say that Imam is the radio station of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah ta'ala broadcast to his people. And it was very amazing. I just tell you a personal thing. Allah Taala says, "Wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fahadis." That when Allah Taala blesses you with something, that you tell people about that, in to be to show your gratefulness to Allah. When initially, when Hazrat uh, gave me this responsibility of taking this message out of taskiyah, of ihsan, of development, of love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, I started my my bayanat in a masjid, in a local masjid in Dubai, under the permission of the Islamic affairs. And subhanAllah, I mean, I would prepare a bayan, and I would always do that after the Maghrib prayers. And it was very amazing that almost, almost, I would say majority of the time, Imam Sam would recite the same ayat that I was thinking of talking. And I would take it as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever, once in a while, whenever Imam Sahib would not recite, I would doubt my sincerity on that day. That something is wrong with me today. I'm, of course I'm wrong all the time, but that something is seriously wrong today. That I did not have any sincerity in the preparation of today's talk or whatever. So subhanAllah, may Allah ta'ala give jazai khair to Ghari Sahib for such a beautiful recitation. And... The ayat that he recited, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a messenger. And Allah ta'ala says in a similar ayah, in some similar ayah that Qari sahab recited that, he said, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done a huge favor on the believers that he has sent to them a messenger from amongst themselves 
What does he do? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. He recites to them the verses of the Quran. And he, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given his kalam, his speech, his, his book, he just passes it down. He's a messenger. He passes it down. And then the second thing what he does is wa yuzakkihim. He purifies people. He does their tazkiyah. People don't understand the concept of tazkiyah. Some people say, oh, you know what? Why do we need a person in order to get our tazkiyah done? In order to purify our nafs, in order to purify our heart. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a mess, as a person who would do, who used to do tazkiyah of people. He would purify people's hearts. He would purify people's hearts. And then he also was given this responsibility of يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ hikma, And he would teach people book and the wisdom. Yani Qur'an and the sunnah. So giving the book, the ayat is something else. And to explain what does Qur'an mean is something else. As Mulana was saying that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given this responsibility to actually tell people what, do, what does these ayat mean. And the explanation of that Qur'an is in the sunnah. So this hikmat is the sunnah as per, as our ulama have explained it. So this is the job of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is said as a messenger, as a man, as a human being who could understand that what are, what do people think? What will be their reaction in different states? And that's why Allah Ta'ala chose a human being to be sent as a messenger, not an angel. In fact, this is what the mushrikeen were as complaining about, that why didn't Allah Ta'ala send an angel? Why did he have to send a human being? And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said that if there were angels walking on the earth, then Allah Ta'ala would have sent an angel. But because all of the people are human beings, that's why Allah Ta'ala sent a human being as a messenger who could understand what people are going through. What people are going through. And this is exactly what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants from all of us, that see, all of you should prepare for that day which is coming, which is that we all have to stand in front of Allah Ta'ala. Before that, we all have to go back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And in order to prepare for that day, what do we need to do? We need to take this man as a role model. And we have to actually just mimic, we have to actually replicate whatever this person is doing. Because this is the man that I have asked him to act in a certain way. And whatever he does, this is what I want. So here is a human being as a messenger. He is not an angel, so that you won't complain, how can I become an angel? I'm a human being. He is a human being. So all right, all what he does is what I want. So you all follow this human being. So this is the job of all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. That we are all here in this dunya to prepare for that day which is coming very, very soon, by the way. We, uh, we are young people or old people, we are white in our beard or we are still black. Doesn't matter. All of us are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very soon before we will even know. Subhanallah, I can still remember, you know, what I used to, you know, what was I doing 20 years ago. It looks like, you know, it was, it just happened a few days ago. Honestly, right? All of us can say the same. And before it, we will even think it will be a time of our, it will be the time of our deaths. Angel will be coming. So what is the purpose of our life? Have you ever reflected? Everybody is busy, subhanAllah, working, accumulating money, increasing their bank balance, building a new house, driving a new car. That's what people are thinking about. There's some people that I see that in their laptop screens on their, as their screen savers, screen savers or the desktop picture, they have their Dream car. The Mercedes that they want to drive and the BMWs that they want to drive and the Lamborghinis. Right? What are people... This it reflects that what are people thinking. People are thinking about what are they going to achieve next. SubhanAllah, everybody has their own thought. Young people have their own dreams and the old people have their own dreams. There are some people that become old, literally they have white hair in their beard, but they are still not thinking about their death. One person came to Hazrat Balana Zulkan Lakshmandi Dam Prakanto Mashir and he was almost 70, 80 and he was still not praying. So Hazrat said, you know what, you should start praying, it's, you know, you're so old. And he said, Hazrat, you know, I have a little pain in my knees, inshallah, when it will get better, I'll start praying. <laughs> this is what people are thinking. I have become old, but I, that death isn't coming, as if I'm going to become young again. Everybody has their own thoughts. 
For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something else from us, my friends, my elders. Allah ta'ala wants that we prepare for that day that is coming. In fact, Hazrat says a beautiful statement. He says that, hum is dunya mein achhi zindagi nahi jine aaye, hum is dunya mein achhi maut manne aaye. People understand Urdu, that we are not here to live a good life, but rather we are here to die a good death. That's our job. We are here to prepare as to how we are going to die. We are preparing for that one day when we are all going to ba- going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we prepare for that day? This is the question. And this is exactly what I said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the man I love. All what I want from a person, from a human being, I have put all of these qualities in this many man. You follow him, all of you. And if you all follow him, then I will love you as well. I will also love you. You will become my beloved. You, I will like you and I will accept you. And this is very natural. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that process? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that process because this is very intrinsic nature of a human being. Subhanahu wa all of us are sitting here, mashallah. You know, a gentleman is wearing this abama in a certain style. You know, some people are wearing their caps in a certain style. You know, everybody has their own style. Why? Why we did we choose to wear a mama in this style? Why did we choose this cap and not that cap? Huh? Why did we choose this sweater and not that sweater? Everybody has had, you know, he, they chose it because they possibly looked at somebody. Somebody followed their shakes. Right? Which is a very good thing, mashallah ta'ala. Because they love a person in their life and they try to follow him. Which is a very good thing. Because they're following a person of Allah. And some people, they just follow because they saw somebody. You know, why do these people spend millions of rands, millions of dollars to give to these actors and actresses and, and these football players to come on the TV for like literally one minute or even less than that? All what they do is that they will come with the, 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 the shoes the certain types of shoes and they will come and you all wear this shoe. And they will literally give them millions of dollars. Why? Because they know the nature of the human beings. The nature of the human beings is they follow somebody. They follow that person who they love. So if a person is following a certain football player, for example, and if they see that football player coming on the TV screen wearing a certain type of shoe, then everybody will go to the book, to the shoe store next day and they will possibly buy that shoe. This is the nature of human beings. That people, they tend to follow somebody. Everybody follows somebody. You know, small little children, you will, you will sometimes notice that they would smile in exactly the same way that their father smiles. Without even thinking. It's a very natural phenomenon. Isn't that true? Subhanallah, I've seen husband wives that if they're married for some time, the wife will start talking the way the husband talks. Or sometimes the husband starts talking the way that the wife talks. Very natural. That it happens. That people tend to follow somebody. It Allah Ta'ala has put that in human beings. Nature. So when we have to follow somebody, when we have to, we have to adopt a lifestyle, then which lifestyle do we have to adopt? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, this man. This man you have to follow. And this is what I want. That's why I'm not sending an angel. I'm sending a human being who goes through the same emotions as you do, who has, who is living a similar lifestyle as you are living. He also eats. He also drinks. He also has wife. He also have, he also plays with children. He also have gone through troubles. He also has been poor person. He also been tortured. He also has been tortured. All of the things that you all go through, this man has gone through the same things. Follow him. And if you follow what he is doing, then you will be successful people. I will love you, all of you. And this is the, these are the ayat that are recited in the beginning. That قُلْ That, oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell these people, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ That if you love Allah, and if you claim to love Allah, sometimes we love and sometimes we claim to love. We say that we love, but in reality we don't. Because our actions don't tell that. I was just telling in the previous bian in the other masjid that, you know, love means submission. Sometimes we say, you know, we love, we love, we love, but our actions don't, don't, don't say that. For example, I was telling that if you, if your child is saying that, oh, I love you, my dad, very much, and you ask him, my son, can you please get me a glass of water? And he says, sorry, dad, I cannot do that. What sort of love is that? 
So some people love and some people just claim to love. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ That if you claim to love Allah, then the proof of that love is فَاتَّبِعُونِي You follow me. Do my ittiba. Do Follow me. There is There are two things. One is ita'at and one is ittiba. Ita'at is that I tell you something, I order you something and you say, لَبَّيْكْ I here I, am at, here I am at your service. I will do that. And ittiba is that you just look at that person and whatever that person is doing, you just follow him footstep by footstep. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you claim to love Allah, the proof of that love will be in the ittiba of Prophet ﷺ. Fattabi'uni. And if you follow him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, yuhbibkum Allah, then Allah ta'ala will start loving you. And not only that, وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And Allah Ta'ala will also forgive you of your sins. What else do we want? Is there anything else do we want? That Allah Ta'ala starts loving us and that He forgives us of, of all our sins. The dunya will be ours, the akhat will be ours. If Allah Ta'ala loves us, then do you think that Allah Ta'ala will ever leave us alone in any of our worries in this dunya? Never, ever. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah Ta'ala will forgive us of our sins, our akhirat will be taken care of. By doing what? فَتَّبِعُونِ By following the Prophet ﷺ. SubhanAllah. Why is that great reward? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the Prophet ﷺ. Allah Ta'ala loves the Prophet ﷺ and that's why whoever will love his beloved, Allah Ta'ala will love him. As simple as that. For example, you love your son, you love your child, and your child grows up, and his, his, his friend comes, and he says, you know, I'm the friend of your son that you love so much, I want this, this, and this. And just because of your, your love for your son, you will take care of that person as well. This is as simple as that. So people who, whoever will follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah Ta'ala's love will come to them. And Allah Ta'ala will forgive them of their sins. Such a simple basic formula and we don't do that. And when we say love, following the Prophet wasallam, ittiba. Ittiba is not only outward ittiba. It's not only keeping a beard. It's not only wearing an amama. It's not only wearing a cap. It's not only wearing a jubba. It's not only that how you eat. It's not only that you are drinking, sitting in, 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 three, in three sips. It's not only that you sit on a mat and say Bismillah and eat. These are all ittiba as well. Unfortunately, many of us, they don't even do that. And it is very easy to do. The easiest of ittiba is this. And mashallah, I've seen in South Africa, I've seen a lot of people, mashallah, they do that. There are people who I would see that will... You know, mashallah, doing the outward ittiba, very good, wonderful, we all must do that. People who are not doing that, please, my friends, do that. Please, it's easy. It's very easy, all what you have, to, in order to grow a beard, in fact, you don't have to do anything. You have, don't, have, don't have to make any effort. All what you have to do is believe, you know, using that razor in the morning, that's it. So easy, mashallah. It's difficult to cut it off. It's easy to grow it. Huh? So it's easy. But there is another ittiba of the Prophet ﷺ. Do you think, do we all think that the Prophet ﷺ just came to teach us as to how do we have to grow our beards? As to how do we have to wear our topis and our caps and our amamas and our jubbas? As to how do we have to wear our abayas and our niqabs and our hijabs? Do we think that? Do we think that this is the purpose of his, of his message? This is the maqsad, this is the goal of his message? No. There's something else. He came to make us human beings. He came to teach us how to be a human. And that is what his seerat is all about. You know, growing a beard and buying a set of jubbas and, 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 and buying a set of topis and that's it, you have to go to the shop and buy it once. That's it. It's one stop you know, shop and then you can get everything that you need of and that's it, you can make your wardrobe. That's it, every single morning you can just wear a new set of jubbas. That's It's very easy to do that. But do you think, do we all think that Prophet ﷺ came for that? He did not come for that. Of course, Allah Ta'ala wants an outward as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
He wants that we also create our outward. The proof is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He mentioned the qualities of people of Allah. What did He mention the first? وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The people of Allah are those who walk humbly on the earth with humility. First thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the way that they walk, the, their walk d- d- determines, it shows that he is a Muslim. When people are walking arrogantly, then it is a sign that his iman is not yet complete in his heart. The outward shows iman. So the way that we look, it shows as to who we are. We are Muslims. Some, sometimes you don't, you meet with a person and you don't even know that if he's a Muslim or not. You think about hundred times before saying salam to him. And he comes and he says, oh, salamu alaykum and he says, wa alaykum as salam. You lose the opportunity of initiating the salam. Just because of this very fact that you don't know if he's a Muslim or not. He's a Hindu, he's a Sikh, what is he? Right? So outward is needed because it is uh, our, our, it is a sign that we are Muslims. It's our uniform. You know, when everybody is admitted into an, say, an army, so what tells us that he is an army officer? His uniform. His uniform is telling that he, he works for army and he's on duty right now. And we have to honor him and we have to respect him because there is a certain protocol that we, that, that he deserves. Of course, he's an army officer. But what tells us that he's an army officer? Well, if he is wearing a jubba, maybe one of you is an army officer. I don't know. If you're an army officer, maybe your haircut, haircut would tell me. But everybody is wearing topis, mashallah. Huh? But how would I know if any of you would have come in, an, in the uniform, then I would know, oh, this gentleman is a general in the army. Just like that, outward is absolutely must. So, because it's our uniform, it tells other people my, that I am a Muslim. That's why outward is absolutely necessary. But it does not stop here. Our problem is that we stop here. That's our full stop, period. Everybody who becomes serious in their deen and they think that, oh, I should walk on the path of deen. This is what we all should be doing. They grow a beard, they wear a cap, they wear a jubba, and that's their full stop. And they forget that this is not the only thing that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was doing. In reality, his sunnah, his following is far deeper than that. It's far deeper than that and that is the forgotten sunnah. What is that forgotten sunnah? Forgotten sunnah is his sirat, is his akhlaq, is his character. He said, innama mu'ithu li utammima makaram al-akhlaq that the only reason, innama, the only reason that I have been sent is to perfect noble character. This is my job. I am here to make people human beings. I am here to take people out of that wilderness, on, uh, from, from that state of being animals, to make them human beings. That's why I have come. And subhanAllah, this is what he showed through practical examples. And that is the sunnah, that is falling of the sunnah. The way that he dealt with his family, the way that he dealt with his wife, the way that he dealt with children, the way that he dealt with old people, young people, orphans, widows, animals, trees, the way that he acted as an army general, the way that he acted as a conqueror, the way that he acted as, you know, when he was oppressed. This is what he showed us, that is what he taught us. And every single person that is sitting here and everywhere, everywhere in the world, he is in one of those states that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in. Some people are very much against, you know, wearing good clothes. They said, oh, you be simple. Very good, you be simple. Right, but, so does that mean that there is no role, there is no room for rich people in our being? We are pushing rich people away. As if we are pushing rich people away from being. You know, sorry, but we have to be simple. If you have to come into deen, then you have to leave all of your villas, your bungalows, you have your, your car, your Mercedes, your BMW. Sorry, but you have to come here as a simple person. Why? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one person, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was wearing very, any clothes that were not very nice. And he said, didn't Allah Ta'ala give you? He said, Allah Ta'ala gave, given me a lot. He said that why are you not wearing good clothes? Allah Ta'ala loves to see the signs of his blessings on people. So wear good clothes. And Prophet ﷺ, although he chose to be a poor man, 
He was offered the wealth of this dunya. But he chose that, Ya Allah, I want to die, I want to live as a miskeen, I want to die as a miskeen. Ya Allah, raise me up on the day of judgment from from Zubratul Masakin, from the group of the Masakin, that's what he chose because he knew that the majority of the people who will be coming in my ummah will be poor people. So they should be, they should feel good about it that we are not alone. Our Prophet was from amongst that, that group. But once he was offered a Yemeni shawl, a very, very expensive shawl, he did not reject it. He did not say one oh, simple, leave it. He took it, he wore it. He wore it for a moment. And then he said, all right, give it in charity, give it to somebody. If it was haram, he would have said, or oh, burn it in the fire. He wore it and then he said, all right, give it, in, give it to somebody who is in need of that. So he did not reject anybody. There's a room for rich people in our, in our deen. Anybody who has any status in our deen, he, they have a perfect example in the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can look into Sayyidina Osman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu. All of these people were rich people. And the way that they acted and whatever they did was also sunnah. Because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approved as to what they were doing. This is also considered as ittiba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this is by friends, my elders, my ulama karam. This is what we need to do. We should not stop at just our outward. We must also work on our inward because that is true ittaba. That is true ittaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow me. Do my ittaba. Yuhbibkum Allah. The way that he was with his wives. Subhanallah, it's so amazing the way that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with his wives. Amazing. You lead, I personally feel that there is no better love story than the love story of Prophet sallallahu and his wives. Amazing. Who talks about Romeo, Juliet and Layla Majnu? Forget about all of these stories. The way that Prophet sallallahu was with his wives, amazing. Once, subhanAllah, Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, Prophet loved her very much, so much. And he, she was the only wife in her lifetime. She, Prophet did not marry anybody in his life, in her lifetime. And once Prophet Sallallahu was sitting with Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, and suddenly somebody called from outside. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khadija? Where is Khadija? Where, it's the voice of Khadija. And then he later found out that she was her sister. And Prophet Sallallahu did her ikram. And Sayyidah Aisha got so jealous, possessive. Ya Rasulullah, you are still thinking about that old woman? Where I am this young woman, young wife sitting in front of you. And Prophet Sallallahu got upset. He said, Aisha, Khadija supported me when nobody supported me. She helped me when nobody helped me. She comforted me when nobody comforted me. How can I forget Khadija? She is the one who gave me children. What a loyalty. What a love story. That after the death, even the death, years later, he is still remembering his own, his, his own beloved. And Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, Subhanallah. The way that Prophet loved her. And once Prophet Prasidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was drinking water. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Aisha, can you leave some water for me? Subhanallah, today we go to our kabreen, our mashayikh, to take their leftover as barakat. Huh? Please leave some for me as well. Here is a messenger of Allah, Sayyid al-Mursaleen, Imam al-Anbiya, asking his wife, can you leave some water for me? And Sayyidah Aisha, she leaves some water. And Prophet Sallallahu takes the bowl and asks sir, where did you put your lips, Aisha? And she points that here is where I put my lips. And Prophet Sallallahu turned the cup and he put his blessed lips at the same place where Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she put her lips. Allahu Akbar. What a love. And this two way, here is Sayyidah Aisha writing poetry for him. Lana shamsun walil afaqi shamsun. For shamsi khayrum min shamsi samai. The, the eye of a sun and the heavens of the sun. And my sun is better than the sun of heaven. Why? Because the sun of the heavens, it comes out during the day and my sun is 24-7. So all the time, it comes during the night as well. Al-Jal, Ajeeb. Love. Subhanallah. Once Prophet was outside with Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, 
And they were by themselves, just those two, and Prabhupada said to Sita, Aisha, Aisha, let's race. Let's have a race. And they had a race. Subhanallah, today we get serious in deen, as if we just become serious. We cannot laugh, we cannot have fun, we cannot talk properly anymore. Hmm. Who do you know? Who are you talking to? Don't you know I've just finished my iftar? I'm just kidding. So all, <laughs> so all the people become so serious. Here is the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Racing with his wife. And he let her win the race. And later, years later, he again, they had an opportunity to they have be alone by themselves outside and he said let's race and this time he won the race and he said tilka bi tilka Aisha this is the revenge of that that win that you had the other day he remembered that Ajeeb. subhanallah amazing personality this is the prophet of Allah showing us how to deal with our wives once he came and he came in the house and they had a difference of opinion See, Aisha had a different opinion than the Prophet ﷺ. Can we ever allow our wives to have a different opinion than ours? How come do you even think like that? I am, don't you know, I'm the Amir of the house. Subhanallah. See, the Aisha is having a different opinion. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he walks in, the father of Sayyidina Aisha. And Prophet ﷺ said to Sayyidina Aisha, Aisha, let's, you know, your father has come in, let's make him the judge. And he will, Decide as to who is right, me or you. And Sayyidina Aisha says, alright, you, t- you tell to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, my father, but make sure whatever you say is right. Make sure whatever you say is right. Here is Sayyidina Abu Bakr, angry, upset. Aisha, how come you did, how come you, did you even say that? Do you think that the messenger of Allah is going to tell me something that's wrong? And he stepped forward in that anger, about to hit Sayyidina Aisha. And Prophet Sallallahu he came in the middle, he said, Abu Bakr, you go. We will fix out our thing ourselves. We made you a judge here. We didn't ask you to hit. Go. And he went and Prophet Sallallahu said to Sayyidina Aisha, Aisha, see who saved you from your father? And that was it. Her heart melted. All of that being upset went away. Subhanallah. Prophet Sallallahu whenever she would get upset, angry, Prophet will come and will rub her earlobes out of love. Aisha, cool down. These are women. We don't understand. We think that they are also men. They are different. Women are different. You know, we, we should not take them as men. They have different emotions. They think differently. They, they go through different phases of their life. They have monthly cycles that, you know, that they have different moods. The scientists have also come up with a different terminology. Premenstrual syndrome. Right? They have total different phases that they go through and we are assuming that they should be thinking exactly the way that we are thinking. Here is Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam standing up at night praying the Hajjad and Sayyidina Aisha says, I would sleep in front of him. He wouldn't like bang her head, you know, get up, what are you doing? You are sleeping, don't you know that we have to pray the Hajjad? She's sleeping. And he would wake her up at the end of the night and she would wake up, wake up herself. But he is Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying all night or majority of the night and she is sleeping, she is not disturbing her. SubhanAllah, he had to go, get up in the morning in a late part of the night to make wudu. It comes in the riwayat that he would come, he would not even wear his shoes. Why? So that there is no disturbance created in the house so that she doesn't wake up. SubhanAllah, this, are, this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how do we deal with our wives? Honestly, we all have to look into our hearts. We all know our own stories. I know my story. And we all know our stories. I'm not here to pick up on anybody. But how do we deal with our wives? What do we do? And here we claim to follow the sunnahs. فَاتَّبِعُونِي Where is ittiba of the Prophet wasallam in our marital life? Where is that? We are angry, we are upset, small little things, less salt, more salt, no sugar, hot food, cold food, that's what we are doing. Do we know that what our wives supposed to do, what are their rights, what are their responsibilities according to Sharia, Mufti Sahib al Sunnah 
Subhanallah, Mawlana Shabari Tanvi Sabrahmatullah, he writes that she does not have any responsibility. And Sharan, she doesn't have any responsibility to cook food for you, to clean the house. Yes, she must do that, but it is not her Shari responsibility as such. So if she cooked the food which had less salt, all right, my friend, doesn't matter. You know, go get the salt and then put a little bit more. Doesn't matter. If it's hot, if it's not hot, doesn't, doesn't matter. Next time it'll be hot. But we are screaming, shouting. I know people. I know people who would shout, scream at their wives that why didn't you put the food at the right time? I'm getting late for the work and literally shouting and screaming as if they have bought a slave. We have not bought a slave. We have gotten a wife in the name of Allah. We have made a contract in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that it's a very, very heavy contract. Mithaq and ghaliza. Wa'ashiru hunna bil ma'roof. Quran, adheem ashan. Deal with them in the best ways. This is sunnah. Where is that sunnah in our life? The way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with children. Allahu Akbar. Children would be playing in the street and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will go and he would go shake their hands. Salaamu alaykum. He would pat on their back. He would put his blessed hand on his, on their cheeks. Sahaba would say that, you know, when they would narrate this, that once I was playing and Prophet came and he put his hand on my cheek and I could still feel the coolness of his, eye, of his hands. Subhanallah. And how many times do we go and, you know, shake hands with the children playing on the street? Subhanallah. I came to pray Asr here and there were kids playing outside the masjid. How many of us actually come down from the car and go to them and say salam to them and pat on their back on their, and put your hand on their, on your, on their cheek? This is the sunnah. Where is that sunnah? Where is that sunnah? We don't even play with our own children. Forget about others. We don't have time for our own children. And people don't even understand. If people who have become ulama, people become, Allah Ta'ala give them responsibility of being a sheikh. And others, they see that these, these people, the ulama, the mufti sahab, and alim sahab, and maulana sahab, and the sheikh sahab, they are playing with their children. They think that, oh, you know, they're, they, what are they doing? What are they doing? This is not their, this, this is not what they are supposed to do. Subhanallah, this is exactly what they are supposed to do. They should literally get time out of their busy schedule to get, give some time to their children. It's a sunnah. It is for, this is sunnah. People don't understand. That's why people pick fingers up on, on, they point fingers at ulama and mashayin. Because they, because of their ignorance, they don't understand what is shariat, what is sunnah. They are trying to understand shariat and sunnah with their own intellect, which does not have complete end. So please have good guman, good opinion about ulama and mashayin. Because you might not know that why are they doing it. They might be doing it with an intention of sunnah. So please let, give time to your children. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be, you know, the way that he was with orphans, with, you, with the yatims. Once, I always tell the story, I love this, that once Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was coming out on the day of Eid, and he saw that all of these children were playing, and there was one child who was sitting, sad. And Prophet sallallahu noticed that. Number one, he noticed that. He went to that child, and he asked him, oh, you know, all of the children are playing, how come you are not playing? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everybody has a father, I am a yatim. I don't have a father. And everybody, all of their fathers, they brought things for them on the day of Eid and nobody was there to bring anything for me. That's why I'm sad. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he held his hand, took him to his house and asked Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha to bring the clothes of Sayyidina Hassan or Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu anhum. And he asked her to give him a bath, put on new clothes and when he came out, Everybody saw that Sayyidina Hassan was on one side of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Hussain was on the other side of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this boy was sitting on the shoulders of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was sitting on the shoulders of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahu Akbar. This is the Prophet of Allah. This is human humanity. This is Sunnah. This is why he came. Look at him. Follow him. SubhanAllah. People would come and would say, Bad words. And he would smile. Once a Yahudi, a Jew, he came, he, Prophet had to take a loan from a Jew. And they said, did I wrote a contract? They wrote a contract that I will return this thing to you on that certain date. 
So Prophet Sallallahu it was still three days left for that for that day to come. And this Jew, he came. And in fact, he was testing the Prophet Sallallahu because it was written in their books that this Prophet who is who will be coming, he, he, will be, he is a person of hilm, forbearance, patience. So he came three days before the, contra- the, the date that was signed and he said, you know, what sort of people are you that you don't even return your loans? And not only he said that, he said, your family is like that. Imagine, somebody says to you, Something bad, and not only he says to you, he says bad things to your father, and your grandfather, and your family is like that. Imagine that would, what sort of anger can it trigger in you? And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was there, and when he heard that, he got so upset. He said that to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, you allow me that I just, just chop off his head with the sword. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was smiling. He didn't move him a bit. He said, Omar, this is not what you should have said. Omar, you should have said to me that I should have, that I must return his loan. And you can say to him, yes, this is not the proper way of asking, of asking back for the loan. Go, Omar, return his loan to him. And because of what you have said to him, you pay him 20 dirhams extra. <coughs> Subhanallah. This is what he was. There were Bedouins coming from the villages and if they had to ask him for something, they would pull a shawl. So much so that there would be marks on his blessed neck. Just imagine we are walking and somebody grabs us from our backs. Right? What will we do? We will return, we will turn and I don't know what we will say. We will definitely would say something that's bad. What is this? Don't you know that this is not the right way to behave? He would, sallallahu would not say anything, would still be smiling. Smiling. This is what Allah Ta'ala wants us to become. Forbearance, hilm, care, love. A Bedouin comes in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he urinates in the masjid. He urinates in the masjid. Imagine if somebody comes here and he urinates here. What will happen? Huh? Will he go back alive? I hope. Subhanallah. I've, no, I've experienced that. I was in, in the U.S. And people will come, you know, they have just converted to Islam. First day, second day, first week. And they will come with their earrings. They will come with their tattoos and their jeans and their t-shirts. And everybody will be after them. Haram. No, shalwar kameez. <laughs> so let him come. Let him settle. Come on. He will take off his earrings. Don't worry. He will start wearing full sleeves. He will start fi- hiding his tattoos. Don't worry. Wait. Give him love. Care. And Sahaba got upset. Of course, they didn't like it. But they were learning from the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet said, sit, sit. Let him do what he's doing. Let him finish. Let him finish. And when he finished, then Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, go clean it. Just take take it off. Just throw water. Just clean it. That's it. And he called his Bedouin. You know, this is not the right way to do. This is the masjid. This is a place of worship. We don't do it here. Allah Akbar. That's it. <laughs> what a seerat. What a personality. And we can go on and on. And you know it better than me. It's just a tazkira. It's just a mudakira. But we don't, we don't reflect on this. We all have these different situations, my friends, my elders. And Allah Ta'ala has created to test us. You know, all what we go through, it's not an accident. Every single state that we go through in our lives, it's not an accident. It's not ittifaqan. It is qudratan. My shaykh always say that nothing is ittifaqan. Everything is qudratan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls everything. Allah ta'ala creates all the situations. Why? Allah ta'ala is creating situations as to how do you behave in that situation. How do you behave? Will you follow the sunnah? Will you look into the life history of the Prophet Islam and react in a way that he reacted? Or will you do something that is not right? And subhanAllah, we don't even think that what, why, why are things happening? Why did I lose my job? Why did I lo- get, got a loss in my business? Why did, why did it happen? SubhanAllah, we go into that depressed state. And SubhanAllah, sometimes we are stuck in the traffic. Allah Ta'ala testing us. And we are there banging the steering wheel. And sometimes, you know, SubhanAllah, the poor wife is sitting next to us and we start scolding her. As if she has got, created that traffic jam. <laughs> So, you, you were busy doing your makeup, that's why we got 10 minutes late and we are stuck in this traffic. Oh, my friend, come on. 
We are supposed to be here at this very time. Don't worry. Relax. Everything is from Allah. Every thing has been created. Everything is written. It's our taqdeer. We were supposed to get stuck in the traffic jam at this very moment. Allah Ta'ala is testing us. How do we behave? Do we do good or do we do bad? So we, this is the sunnah. We have to look into the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the way that he forgave people. Forgave people. How many times do we forgive? Somebody does, just doesn't call us to invite us on his wedding party or his, his daughter's or his son's wedding party. That's it. Then we are not talking to him for the rest of our life. Isn't that true? SubhanAllah. So even this much happens that, for example, there is a couple, you know, both sides of family, and the wife, she invites the other wife. And if the husband doesn't call the other husband, subhanAllah, the ego of this man is so much that he will not be wanting to go to that party anymore, to that meal invitation. Why didn't he call me himself to invite me to the party? This is our issue. I personally had that experience. You know, subhanAllah, we, we invited some people over the, for the meal. And I would, I mean, because I would, I never expect if somebody's wife has called my wife, that's it for me. And she comes and asks me, you know, is it okay that if you go to that part, uh, to that, that, to that meal? I said, alright, inshallah, if you like, inshallah, we'll go. If you have time and if you want to go, and we can go. And subhanAllah, I don't expect that this man will also call me individually wasting another phone call for no reason. I, I have gotten the message, why are you wasting another phone call? Save it for something good. So, subhanAllah, I, my wife invited, <laughs> The, the other women, you know, and this gentleman, he came to drop his wife off, and I, I was thinking that he's coming, I said, all right, welcome, Jazakallah, you have come. No, no, any, subhanAllah, then shaitan will force us to do, and to, to lie, uh, to, to sin more, in form of a lie. And he said, no, 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 I have to take care of something, I have to go, I cannot come. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. And I thought it's something serious that he couldn't come. And later on I found out through some other, another of my friends that the reason that he didn't come in the house is because I personally did not invite him. And I was thinking, my God, if I had known, I would have spent one phone call and one extra minute. But this is our state. I'm saying this is our state. So much so people would not, would feel bad if we don't invite, if we don't wish them on their birthday parties. They will not talk to him for three years, for five years, just for that one birthday phone call. And here is the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imagine, we must know who he, what he went through. Tortures, physical tortures. He was forced. He and his companions were forced to leave Makkah Mukarramah for three years, and they boycotted him. Didn't give them food. They were boiling the leaves of the trees, and that's what they were eating. And subhanAllah, the children, the small little babies, they were eating the leaves of the trees. Imagine, if our children are eating leaves for three years consecutive, what we would, we would go through? Somebody is forcing us to do that. Imagine the hatred that we will have in our heart for that person or that group of people. Isn't it? And here he, and then he's forced to leave Makkah Mukarma to leave the, his city where he was born. And he had tears in his eyes when he was leaving that place. He said, Oh Kaaba, you know, I, I don't want to leave you, but what can I do? Your people don't let me live here. And he is going and a time came when he came back as a conqueror, as a fatih. And he, everybody thought this, that is it. Now he's coming as a conqueror with all of his army and everybody hid in their, in their homes. And they were thinking his army would come and will come into our houses and they will rob us and will dishonor our women. And they're, they're, this is what they were mentally preparing for. And nobody is coming. Nobody has entered the house. And some of them, one of them said, all right, go and check out what are they doing, where are they? And nobody is bothered about any of these people. They were all doing the mouth of the Kaaba. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gathered everybody and he said, what do you think I'm going to do with you today? What do you think I'm going to do with you today? And they knew exactly who this person was. And they said, Akhun Kareem, Ibn Akhun Kareem, you are a generous man and a son of a, and son of a generous man. And he exactly did that. He said, La tathriba alaykum al Go, there is no harm on you. I forgive you all. Allahu Akbar. Imagine it's easy to say that. It's so difficult to understand it even. It's not easy. And this is what he was doing. His own children have been, have been, have passed away. 
One of her, his daughters passed away because of the tortures of the mushrikeen. She was expecting a baby and they tortured her and she migrated from Makkah, Makarma, Medina to Medina, Ramara. She had a miscarriage and she actually passed away. And Prophet ﷺ is burying this daughter of his with his own hands into his grave. Imagine. And here is he, I forgive you all. And what are we doing? We take small little things and keep it in our hearts. And just to keep it forever. Prophet Sallallahu has said that every single night when I sleep, I make sure that there is no ill feeling in my heart for any of the Muslims. And this is my sunnah. This is my sunnah. And whoever will follow my sunnah will be, will be with me on the, on, on the, in paradise. This is sunnah. He said this is my sunnah that you leave, you get rid of all of the ill feelings from your heart. And we look into our hearts literally as if it's a garbage can. We put all the filth of jealousy, hatred, animosity, ill feelings in our hearts as if like a garbage can. That's an extra thing and we put all of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that this heart should be pure. You know, on the day of judgment, nothing will benefit us, my friends. All of this wealth that we are trying to earn, these cars that we are driving, the, the, the houses that we live in, nothing of, none of that will help us. Allah Ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of judgment, this wealth, these children, they are not going to benefit you. What is going to benefit you? A sound heart, clean heart, not a filthy heart. Not a filthy heart. Not a heart filled with animosity, arrogance, takabur, jealousy, hasad, kibr, ujab, riya, ostentation, you name it. This is sunnah. This is why this man was, was came. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you claim to love Allah, if you are a believer, in other words, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me. يُحْبِكُمُ Allah, Then Allah ta'ala will love you. Subhanallah, this is the sabbuf. This is tazkiyah. This is ihsan. This is ilm al-qalb. This is ilm al-ihsan. You name whatever. This is what it is. Follow sunnahs. Our mashayikh say that if the, you cannot... Get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything as the way that you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the sunnahs. This is the key thing, number one thing, if you want to, if any of us want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Mujadid al-Sani rahmatullah alayhi, he writes in his maktubat that to sleep in the afternoon with the intention of qailula. To sleep in the afternoon with the intention of qailula. And Prophet used to sleep for a little while in the afternoon so that he was fresh during the night. To sleep in the afternoon with the intention of the sunnah of qailula is better than thousand rakas of nawafil at night. Why? Because those are nawafil, nafil. And sleeping in the afternoon with the intention is sunnah. He said sunnah, it is more than a nafil. And you are sleeping, resting, and here you are doing mujahidah, standing up and, and praying thousand rak'ah. He said that this is better. This is better. In fact, he also writes that nafal worship that you do by yourself, it is sometimes very dangerous because your nafs can get destroyed with that. Why is that? Because you are praying and praying and praying and you are thinking, oh, mashallah, I'm such a big abid. The nafal worship can literally destroy you, destroy your nafs. But if you do things according to sunnah, that is something that is required. You know, a man came to, to Hazrat, I think, and he said, you know, I've been fasting every single day of my life for the last, I don't know, 40 years. Every single day of fasting. And some people would think, oh wow, mashallah, he is fasting every single day. So Hazrat said to that he passed on the message, you know what? You try to fast alternate days. You try to fast alternate days, not every day, alternate days. He said, you are right, it's very difficult to do that. Then he fast for a day and not fast the other day. Then he eat the other day and then fast and then not, not fast. It's difficult to follow sunnahs. Somebody came to Hazrat Mulana, Hazrat Junaid Baghdadi, rahmatullah he said, Hazrat, I want to live in your company. I want to stay in your sohbat. So Hazrat allowed him. He said, all right, come in my khanaqa. And he stayed in his company for 10 years. For 10 years. And after 10 years, he came to Hazrat and he said, you know, please grant me leave. I want to, I want to go back. 
Hazrat said, all right, but why are you leaving? He said, you know, I came, I thought you are a big sheikh. And I stayed with you for 10 years and I did not see any karamat in you. I did not see any miracle in you, any unnatural thing in you. So I thought you were a big sheikh. So Hazrat said, that did you see me in last 10 years any, doing anything against sunnah? He said, no. You did not see anything, again. you did not do anything against sunnah. She said, what else is the karamat? Al-istiqamatu fawqul karamati. The istiqamat consistency on following shariat and sunnah. What can be the biggest karam, bigger karamat than that? People, subhanAllah, this is what they think the suffer is. This is what people think that ihsan and tazkiyah is. That you will start walking in, on the water and you will start flying in the air and you will start doing unnatural things. Subhanallah, that's why people got so amazed with you. Somebody was showing me a YouTube video the other day. Don't look at it. Sorry. <laughs> but subhanAllah, I mean, people show me so that I can know what, what is happening out there in the world. And they showed me a Naqshbandi Hanaka. <laughs> I was, I got scared just looking at that. People were just like you know, shaking and moving and dancing and jumping. Subhanallah, this is not the maqsad of the suburb. If somebody is doing that, we reject them outward, straight away. This is not what you are going. In fact, our Mashaikh has said that if sometimes it does happen that your state, your inner state becomes extreme, that you are not able to control that sometimes in muraqaba, in doing the zikr. Our Mashaikh said that if you go into that state, stop your muraqaba right then and then. You are not allowed to go into any of these states outwardly. That is against Shri and Sunnah. Not allowed to do that. Subhanallah, people think this is the suburb and that's why some people are put off from the suburb and Ihsan and Tazkiyah. This is the whole purpose of Tazkiyah, Ihsan, Tasawwuf is this, that how can complete Shariat and complete Sunnah, complete Sunnah can come in your life. In other words, how can your Akhlaq when become the best? How can you become like the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So this is what we need to do. We need to be, follow the Sunnahs from outward. Some people are, you know, subhanAllah, they come, the uh, other day I was talking about this topic as well in a different way. And he said, oh, you have, you have said the b- beautiful thing. This is the best beat that I've ever heard. And subhanAllah, this guy did not have a beard. And what he was trying to prove was that what I'm doing is right. I'm trying to improve my character. It is not necessary to have the outward. And I explained to him, it's not, it's both are needed. People forget, this is again falling off the nafs. Whatever you like, then you do that. We need the outward and we need the inward. And the beautiful example, who is the best Ummati? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Right? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is, is our aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that he is the best man. He is the, on the face of the earth in the Ummat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Right? After the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he is the best man. He is the best person. So what, have you ever thought about that why he's the best person? Because he was, the, he had that complete sunnah in him. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was migrating with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and he, when they reached Medina Munawwara, it was like they were coming from Quba to Medina Munawwara very early morning. They started right after Fajr and it was still dark, a little dark. And all of these people were waiting to welcome the Prophet ﷺ. And the majority of them had not seen the Prophet ﷺ. So when they were coming, they saw two men coming. They saw two men coming. And they did not know who is the Prophet. And subhanAllah, they were so look-alike. They were so look-alike that they thought Abu Bakr Siddiq is the Prophet. Imagine, they thought Abu Bakr Siddiq is the Prophet. And they came forward to shake hands with him. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq realized that what is happening. He purposely, he stepped forward and started shaking hands with anybody. He purposely, why? Because there were thousand people, thousands of people standing. And if they had all started shaking hands with the Prophet, he was tired. And he didn't want that he get more tired. So he purposely went forward and started shaking hands. Nobody realized that he was not the Prophet. And when he was done shaking hands, suddenly the sun came out. And when the, the rays of the sun, they kissed the blessed cheeks of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, he took his, his chadar, his, 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 his shawl, and he put it on the, on the head of, the, of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then people knew that who is the master, who is the slave. <laughs> Allah Akbar. They were so look-alike. <laughs> so look-alike. In fact, all sahaba were. You know, people would come from outside and they would come in the gathering and Prophet ﷺ is sitting and the Sahaba were sitting and they will ask, Man kana minkum Muhammadan? 
Who is Muhammad amongst you? Because they were not able to find out. They were all lookalikes. This is a proof. We need outward. And this same Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. You know when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came from the, the cave of Hira and he was scared the first revelation that he got. And he came, he was shivering and he came home to say the Khadija radiallahu anha and he was saying, Zammiluni, Dasiruni, you know, cover me up. And say the Khadija asked, what happened? Why are you shivering? He said, I'm scared of my death. I, I am scared that somebody will kill me. And what did Sayyidina Khadija say? She said, Kalla, no way that you can, you be, you be harmed. Why? Inna kalla tasilu rahim. Wa tahmilu al kal. Wa taksibu al ma'doom. Wa tukri al daif. Wa tu'inu ala nawaib al haq. You are the man who joined blood relationships. You are the one who carry the burden of other people. You are the one who go and earn for the people who don't have it. You are the one who honor the guests. And you are always on the right side, always on the truth. How can it happen that anybody can harm you? These are the qualities that Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu ta'ala said about Prophet sallallahu A time came when there were a lot of tortures that were happening on the, on the companions of the Prophet alayhi salam. The Prophet said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, you migrate to Habsha. You migrate. It's very difficult for, for us to live here. So one by one, you all migrate. You also migrate. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was migrating. He set out to, for migration. And he was right outside Makkah Makarma. There was a bushrik. There was a person who knew Abu Bakr Siddiq very well. And he said, where are you going Abu Bakr? He said, you know, I'm leaving. He said, why are you leaving? He said, you know, because people cannot, they're not letting me live here. So, do you know what did he say? He said, Abu Bakr, why are you leaving? So you're such a beautiful man. Exactly the same words that Sayyidina Khadija used for Prophet Wasallam. This man is using for Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. This shows that his inward was also exactly like the Prophet Wasallam, And this is the reason that he is the best ummati. This is what we all want, outward and inward. Please. And subhanAllah in this time and age, when sunnat is so rare, and we, Prophet Sallallahu has given us, all of us, a glad news, glad tiding in this age. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that, مَن تَمَسَّكَ بِسُنَّةِ عِنْدَ فَسَادِ أُمَّتِي فَلَهُ أَجْرُ مِعْتِ شَهِيدٍ That whoever will hold on to my sunnah at a time of the fasad of our ummah, yani the time when people will forget about sunnah, people will not even care about it. SubhanAllah, my heart, it breaks when people, when you, you address you, uh, you, you encourage people to follow sunnah. Do you know what do they say? Oh, it's only a sunnah. Yani they're saying it's not fard, not wajib. It's only a sunnah. Subhanallah. Do you know what are you saying? It's only a sunnah. It's the sunnah. Follow it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said when people will not care about sunnahs anymore and those people who will follow sunnahs at that time, falahu ajru mi'ati shaheedin, they will have the reward of hundred martyrs. One sunnah, Reward of hundred martyrs. Do you know what's the reward of one martyr? One martyr. You know, on the, in paradise, nobody will want to go back into the earth, back to the earth except a martyr. He will want that he go back and he's martyred again so that he will again get the same reward that he's getting now. He will love that. And one sunnah, following of one sunnah, Prophet ﷺ is promising us that he you will get the reward of hundred martyrs. This is the time for that. One sunnah. The way that we wear our shoes, the way that we eat, the way that we drink, sit down, three sips, the way that we, we deal with our wives. So please, next time your wife doesn't behave with you, she says something that you don't like, just smile. Don't say anything, please, for the sake of Allah. I'm requesting you. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't say anything in return, smile. And inshallah, her heart will melt. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your status. Allah ta'ala will love you. Yuhbibkum Allahu wa yaghfir lakum dunubakum. Allah ta'ala will forgive you of your sins and you will get the reward of hundred martyrs just by doing this one thing. SubhanAllah, we don't care about all of that. We don't want love of Allah. We don't want forgiveness from Allah. We don't want the reward of the hundred martyrs just because our ego is so strong that we don't, we cannot stop but to reply back to our wives and our children and our friends and our families, all of that. So please, please, I, I request that please become people of Allah. And what, how do you become people of Allah? By following the sunnah of this beautiful man, sallallahu alayhi wa Subhanallah, there were sahaba who were fanafishayk, honestly, if I want to call this name. They were fanafishayk. 
Who was their Shaykh Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? They were fana on him. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah. I love this man. You know, so he was just walking on the camel and suddenly he would blow his head and then again would raise his head. And so his companions would ask, what are you doing? He said, you know, once I was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming here and there used to be a tree here and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lowered his head to save himself from the branch of that tree, although this tree isn't there anymore, but I want to just copy what he did. Subhanallah. And people think, are you crazy? Yes, we are crazy, or if you want to call it that. We are crazy. We are crazy to get the love of Allah. We are crazy to get the forgiveness from Allah. We are crazy to get so much reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are crazy. Do everything outward and inward. How does this come into our heart? It is not easy. As I said, outward is easy. Very easy. So let's do that. Let's everybody start doing that, alright? Inward, it's difficult. It's very difficult. I agree to that. But this is the challenge, right? This is the challenge. Fine. Now for that, there is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. What is that sunnah? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqullaha wa kunu ma'asadikeen. The way that you can purify your hearts, the way that you can get this thing in your heart is by being in the company of those people who have been able to get that. I'm just giving you just of what this means. Who have been able to get that, you go and sit in their company and you will become like them. The mashayikh, who have been able to get this thing in their life, you go in them and as I said in the beginning, we have this natural tendency to follow somebody. Right? All of these people who are following, if they are mashayikh or ma, they're following them. That's why they're wearing what they're wearing. They're, they're, they, 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 they sometimes talk, they sit like those people. And it's very natural. So Allah Ta'ala wants that we go and sit in the company of the people of Allah and this is the way that we can get this thing in our life. This is the only way, honestly speaking. It's very hard otherwise. This has been the sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Kunu ma sadiqeen. Everybody, honestly, I don't know if people, they, they understand this concept here or not, but this is the concept, you know, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants all of us to have, to, to to, to bring in our life, which is to take a person of Allah in our life as our guide, as our murabbi, as our the one who will, who will do our tarbiyat, who will guide us as to how to follow sunnahs. And this is the concept of taking bath with a shaykh. This is why people take bath with a shaykh, so that they can be with their in their company. And they also take the askar, the mamulat that they prescribe to do it on a daily basis. And the zikr is the polish of the heart. It polishes our heart, and then by being in their company, we will acquire those attributes from them. You know, I, I was going on to etikaf, I tried to, alhamdulillah, Allah gives me tawfiq to do my etikaf with my shaykh. And once I was going uh, on etikaf, we do it in Africa, in Zambia. So I went to see one, a big sheikh. You know, he was visiting Dubai, so I just went to say salam. And our mashaykh, Hazrat has always taught us that whenever there's a person of Allah who comes in the town, you go and say salam to him. So I went to say salam to him, and he asked me, where are you going? And I told him that I'm going for Aitakaf to be in the company of my sheikh. So he said me a beautiful word. Even he is the direct descendant of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jinani Rahmatullahi. He was from his family. So he said, you know what? Make sure that you get everything from your sheikh. He said, make sure that you absorb, you get everything from your sheikh. Only people who understand this will know what I'm saying. Yet he get all his attributes, absorb his attributes. When you are in a sobat, make sure the nur that is in his heart, the attributes that he has acquired from his sheikh, all the way to the Prophet ﷺ, you get that, you absorb that. This is what happens in the company of the Mashayim. So please, everybody must have a shaykh. Everybody must be bad. Whatever your expertise are, you are an alim, you are a mufti, you are busy in the work of Dawat and Tabliq, this is all wonderful. These are all branches of our beautiful deen. Everybody has their own mizaj. And it's good. Everything is good. Dawat and Tabliq is an accepted work. People who are studying in Madaras, they, have stu- they, are, they are teaching in Makatib and Madaras, it's a beautiful work. But at the very same time, it is also our tradition that we must take birth with a shaykh and develop ourselves, our heart. For what? Not to fly in the air, not to walk on the water, but to bring those sunnahs in our life. Complete sunnahs, ikhlaq, the inward and the outward. Inshallah ta'ala, this is the message that I want to give. Inshallah ta'ala, please, this is a forgotten thing. This tradition is also a forgotten tradition. You know, people don't consider that anymore. People don't even understand anymore. 
So please, we must have this thing in our life. You know, somebody asked them, you know, how can we find a true shaykh? How can we find such a man? There is nobody. Imam Razi Rahmatullah in the tafsir of this ayat, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ittaqullah wa kunu smaa sadigeen. He says, it is impossible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to go and sit with and be, connect ourselves in, in the company of all, people of Allah. It is impossible that there will come a time that people of Allah ta'ala will, will be gone from this world. It's our talab, our ikhlas, that we should go out and search for those people. I can tell you there are many in your own community. And there are people who will come, there are people. You, it's your job that you should hook yourself up, inshallah. You know, subhanAllah, if there are mashayik in the community, please hook yourself up. And be with them, connect yourself with them, do the mamula that they're getting, and acquire and absorb the nur from their hearts, so that your heart will also become a heart of sunnah. Wa akhru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah, before dua, if we can recite the kalimat of tawbah. You know, our mashayikh have taught us a few kalimat. Basically, it's the tajdeed, the renewal of our iman, and then asking Allah Ta'ala that He forgives us of all the sins that we have been doing. Anybody who wants to take bayt in the salsalah, they can also make the intention of bayt. Other can, inshallah, make the intention of tawbah. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nasbafa amma ba'd. So, inshallah, if you can recite these kalimat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad rasulullah Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala wal ba'si ba'da al maut Amantu billahi kama huwa bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa qabiltu جميع أحكامه إقرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين these are the kalimat. There are few mamulat uh, that our mashayikh have taught to be done on a daily basis. Anybody who is bayt with a shaykh and you are doing their mamulat, please continue doing that. The others, there are few mamulat. One is doing istighfar every day in the morning and in the evening hundred times each. So hundred times in the morning, hundred times in the evening. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu ilayh. Second is salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Duru. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. So that's also hundred times in the morning, hundred times in the evening. The third is reciting Quran every day, even if it's little, but do it every day, please. You know, half a juice, quarter juice, one juice, whatever you can do, inshallah, every day. And the fourth is the most important, which is called something called muraqaba. Muraqaba in reality is remembering Allah Taala in the heart. Doing the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala in the heart. The way to do that is that you, for some time you find some isolation when nobody is disturbing you. Sit with closed eyes and have this intention as if Allah's mercy is coming on the heart. And as if the heart is doing the dhikr of Allah with His name. Allah, Allah, Allah. And as if I'm listening. So you don't do anything. Just relax. Sit with this intention. Don't say anything with the tongue. Don't move yourself. Nothing. Just focus on your heart as if it's saying Allah, 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 as if I'm listening. That's it. 10, 15, 20 minutes of muraqba every day. Very powerful dhikr. So four things. Istighfar 100 times morning, evening. Salawat on the Prophet the morning, evening 100 times. Quran and muraqba. That's it. But you will feel a difference in your heart. And having said that, you know, another thing that our Mashaikh said, that always have istizar of Allah. Always have a feeling, Allah Ta'ala is looking at me. Huwa ma'akum, aina ma'kuntum. He is with you wherever you are. Don't think I'm, I'm alone, I'm by myself. Allah Ta'ala is with me. All the time. He is looking. My parents might not be looking, my wife might not be looking, my children might not be looking. Allah Ta'ala is looking. It will help us in not, in inshallah Ta'ala staying away from sins as well. Alright? And as I said, please, do everything sunnah way. Also memorize masnoon du'as. Recite du'as as well. Many of us, we know du'as, we don't read them at their time. So please get into the habit of reading them as well. Inshallah ta'ala, your life will change for good. Inshallah. Before du'a, if you can do muraqah for a few moments. If
close your eyes and sit with this intention as if Allah's mercy is coming on the heart and as if the heart is doing the dhikr of Allah with this beautiful name Allah, Allah, Allah. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله إن شاء الله أكرم سبحان ربي الأعلى الوحى الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت غليجها ومولاها يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا الله please accept this gathering from all of us and all of these people have come يا الله on a weekday, Ya Allah, they have to go to work tomorrow. They chose to come and sit in the gathering of your blessed zikr. Ya Allah, please accept their coming, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, because of their talab, because of their ikhlas. Ya Allah, please accept it from all of us. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, please forgive us of all the shortcomings that we had, Ya Allah. Lack of sincerity, lack of adab, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, all the wrong things that have been said, Ya Allah, by mistake. We beg you, Ya Allah, that you forgive all of the shortcomings and still accept it from all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you accept our tawbah. Ya Allah, we do tawbah from all the sins that we have done in our life. Ya Allah, this very moment, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we beg you that you please accept it and make us firm in our tawbah until our death, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, we ask you of forgiveness of all the sins. We don't give you any excuse of what we have done. All what we say, Ya Allah, that Rabbana zalamna anfusana Ya Allah, we have been oppressing ourselves Wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna nanakunanna minal khasireen If you don't forgive us, Ya Allah, and do not shower your mercy upon us Ya Allah, we we'll lose this test of life Ya Allah, we beg you that you please forgive all of us, Ya Arham al-Rahimeen Ya Allah, Ya Akram al-Akrameen Ya Allah, please allow us do Ya Allah follow the sunnahs of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inwardly and outwardly. Ya Allah, please improve our ikhlaq. Ya Allah, we have become burden on your people. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, make us the source of ease for people and not burden for people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, all the people that we have oppressed. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you please put in their hearts that they forgive us. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Please, Ya Allah, you give them compensation from your infinite prayers, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, let them not come to us on the Day of Judgment demanding for their rights, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we already don't have anything, Ya Allah, in our book of deeds. Ya Allah, we have no action, no amal whatsoever. Ya Allah, what if small little actions that we might have, what if they take that as away as well? Ya Allah, we beg you, please, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, that you... Put in their hearts that they forgive us today, tonight, this very moment, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, Ya Akram al please save our Iman. Please save Iman of our children, Ya Allah. Please save Iman of every single person who is going to come until the day of judgment from our generations, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, when we try to follow Sunnah and Shariat, people look at us and they, they consider us crazy people. Ya Allah, they consider as if we are doing committing a crime, as if we are strangers. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, and we think about this beautiful hadith of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Islam started as something strange, and soon will come a time that it will become strange. And then he made a dua, Fatubah lil that blessed are the strangers. Ya Allah, 
We look like strangers walking on this earth today, Ya Allah. But please, Ya Allah, accept this dua in our favor as well. Ya Allah, please bless all of us who try to follow deen outwardly and inwardly. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, please shower your blessing upon all of us. Ya Allah, we also beg you that you accept all of us for the service of your deen. Ya Allah, we are definitely not worthy, not qabil to serve your deen. But we also know, Ya Allah, that it is not about qabiliyat. It's only about Qubuliyat. Ya Allah, please accept us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, provide us path from your infinite prayers. Ya Rabbi Rahimeen, that we need in serving this deen of yours, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Allah, we are here at your door, Ya Allah, begging you. Ya Allah, please save us from begging at other people's doors, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, you provide from your prayers, Ya Allah, with khair, with barakat, with afiyat, with musad. Ya Allah, the best of the dunya and the best of the akhirat. Ya Allah, please be happy with us at every single second of our life, Ya Allah. Especially at the time of our death, Ya Allah. Please allow us to recite Kalima as our last words, Ya Allah. Please make our graves from the gardens of paradise. Please make the questions of the graves easy for us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, please make it spacious, fill it with nur. Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, we beg you that you please give our books in our right hands. Please make us from your muqarrabeen. Please, Ya Allah, give us the share of your throne. Please give us the water from the blessed hands of your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Grant all of us his intercession, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, when we meet with him on that day, please, Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, he is happy with us. Ya Allah, what if he says that I beg, I cried for you all night long and you did not follow my sunnahs, why have you come here tonight, today? Ya Rahman Rahimeen, save us from that calamity. Please allow us, Ya Allah, give us tawfiq to follow sunnahs inwardly and outwardly. And Ya Allah, please make that meeting a very pleasant experience. Ya Allah, please, when he sees, when he looks at us, Ya Allah, please, he smiles at us and intercedes for us, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, please allow us to enter paradise without any questioning, any reckoning, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, most of it all, please grant all of us your perfect vision. Ya Allah, all the people have asked for du'as. You know their needs more than we do. Ya Allah, please fulfill their needs from your infinite prayers. With khair, with barakat, with afiyat, nusat. People who are sick, Ya Allah, spiritually or physically, please grant them perfect cure. People who are in calamities, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please remove them. Ya Allah, remove those calamities from them. In the whole of us, Ya Allah, wherever they are. Ya Allah, please, Ya Rabbi Rahimin, please remove those calamities from them. Ya Allah, we don't know how to ask. Ya Allah, give us without asking. Ya Arham ar Ya Allah, the love that people have shown here, Ya Allah. We don't have anything to give them back. Ya Allah, in return you grant them your true love, Ya Allah. People who have done khidmat. Ya Allah, we have heard from our teachers, our mashayikh, ke ibadat se jannat milti hai, khidmat se khuda milta hai. Ya Allah, please give them your true, your qurbi, Ya Arham ar Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta sameeu alim وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا يَا مَوْلَانَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله